Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. This is George Committee and we are still analyzing simple stresses and strengths. The question of uh, today is as follows. A brass bar having cross-sectional area of uh, 1000 square millimeters is subjected to axial forces as shown in the figure below. Find the total elongation of the bar. Take Young's modulus of elasticity of brass to be 100 giganewtons per square meter. So this is the brass bar section. And you can see that the bar is loaded as we have shown in that diagram. Then the brass bar have got three sections. We have section A, B as well as section C. The first section have got a length of 0 0.6 meters. The second section, 1 meter, and the third section, that is section C, a length of 1.2 meters. Now, we are supposed to um, separate these three sections and put the loads in such a way that they are in equilibrium. And in this case, I have already separated the sections, uh, but I'm going to explain how we come about the loads subjected on each and every section. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscription button. Good. Now, back to our question. When you look at uh, section A, you will find that it is uh, subjected to a tensile load of 50 kilonewtons. And therefore, if for equilibrium purposes, it means that the other end, that is the right hand side end, should also be subjected to a tensile load of 50 kilonewtons. Section B. Section B will be loaded by a compressive load of 30 kilonewtons on both sides. And the way we get it is when we look at um, this part here, we have a load of 80 kilonewtons. On this side, we have a load of 50 kilonewtons. Therefore, the resultant force will be 80 minus 50 kilonewtons, which will give us 30 kilonewtons. Remember, a force or, uh, or forces are vector quantities. They have both direction and magnitude. So the arrow shows or usually show the direction of action of the force. Therefore, this uh, load of 80 kilonewtons is acting towards the right. This one is acting towards the left. The resultant will be 80 minus 50 to get 30 kilonewtons. So, and you can also prove that by adding these two forces, 10 plus 20, since they are acting toward the same direction to get 30 kilonewtons. Section C, we got a compressive load of uh, 10 kilonewtons here, meaning that on the left hand side it should also be 10 kilonewtons for equilibrium purposes. We must put the section in equilibrium. You can also get uh, the same um, value of the load on the right hand side by taking this 80 minus the sum of 50 plus 20. Since 20 kilonewtons and 50 kilonewtons are acting towards the same direction, meaning that their resultant force is 70 kilonewtons, 50 plus 20. So this one is acting in the opposite direction of the two. And therefore, 80 minus 70, that gives you 10 kilonewtons. Now, after putting the three sections in equilibrium, the next thing will be getting into serious business, finding the total elongation of the bar. Now, we notice that Young's modulus of elasticity is given by the ratio of stress to strain. And we also know that stress is given by load divided by cross-sectional area. We also know that strain is given by the ratio of change in length divided by the original length. So when we substitute stress and strain in this uh, formula, we are going to have Young's modulus of elasticity being given by stress, which is load over area. Therefore, P over A, we divide this by strain which is change in length divided by the original length and therefore the Young's modulus of elasticity will be given by load 
times length divided by area times the change in length. Going to have the reciprocal of that. So, making change in L the subject of this uh, equation, we are going to have change in length is equals load times length divided by area times the Young's modulus of elasticity. So this is what uh, this is the formula we are going to use. Now, let change in length one, uh, change in length a be the change in length in section A of this brass bar. And therefore, this will be given by the loads subjected on to this section multiplied by the length of this section A divided by cross-sectional area of the brass bar times the Young's modulus of elasticity of the brass. Then, the change in length in section B will be given by load subjected on section B times the length of section B divided by area of the brass section multiplied by the Young's modulus of elasticity of brass. Then the change in length in uh, section C will be given by load subjected on section C times the length of section C divided by the cross-sectional area of the brass bar multiplied by the Young's modulus of elasticity. Now, we will find that section A is subjected to tensile forces. So that means that the section A will be increased in length since it is being pulled out by these tensile forces. Section B is subjected to compressive forces of that kN, meaning that it will be shrinked, it will be decreased or shortened in length. And when you talk about shortening in length, we take it as negative because there is a decrease in length. The same case to section C, decrease in length. And therefore, we can say that this, is a, this will be a positive change in length. That is an increase. This will be a decrease in length. And this one will also be a decrease in length. And therefore, the resultant or the net change in length, the net change in length, will be given by change in length in section A minus change in length in section B minus change in length in section C. Because these two are experiencing a decrease in length. So, we are going to have the total change in length or the total elongation will now be given by applying this formulas or substituting these uh, formulas in the net change. We are going to have changing length in section A. We have it here. That's going to be load times length divided by area times the Young's modulus of elasticity minus load times length of section B divided by area times the Young's modulus of elasticity Minus load in section C, length of section C, divided by area times Young's modulus of elasticity. Since A and E are common all through, we are going to factor them out to make our calculation easy or simple. Therefore, the change in length is going to be 1 divided by area times Young's modulus of elasticity into... PA times LA minus PB times LB minus PC times LC. So this one is going to lead us to the total elongation will now be 1 divided by the cross-sectional area of this steel bar is 1000 uh, millimeters uh, squared. We should convert that to square meter. So, we know that one, one square meter is equivalent to one million square millimeters, or 10 raised to the power of 6. And therefore, the area will be um, 
times 10 raised to the power of negative 3. That is 1000 divided by 1 million. It's going to give us that. Uh, then we multiply this by Young's modulus of elasticity. We have been given as 100 giganewtons. Converting to newtons per square meter, that is 10 raised to the power of 9. Since giganewtons, that is a billion newtons. Then we multiply this by the load subjected to section A, 50 kilonewtons. We should convert the newtons to um, the kilonewtons to newtons. Since we have also converted the giganewtons to newtons per square meter. So this is going to be 50 times 1,000, that is 50,000 times the length of section A, 0 0.6 meters. Then we subtract this with um, load in section B, that is 30 kilonewtons, so that is going to be 30,000 times the length of section B, 1 meter. Minus section C, we got a um, load of compressive load of 10 kilonewtons. So that is 10,000 newtons times the length of section C, 1.2 meters. So that is what we are going to have. Now, this is going to give us um, 1 divided by. When we multiply all these, 1 times 10 raised to the power of negative 3 times 100 times 10 raised to the power of 9, that is going to give us 100 times 10 raised to the power of 6 into 50,000 times 0 0.6, that is going to give us 30,000. Minus 30,000 times 1, that is 30,000 also. Minus 1.2 times uh, 10,000, that happens to be 12,000. So, this is going to give us um, 30,000 minus 30,000, that is zero. So, we are going to remain with negative 12,000 times 1, which is negative 12,000, divided by 100 times 10 raised to the power of 6. This is going to give us negative 1.2 times 10 raised to the power of negative 4 meters. In millimeters, when you convert these to millimeters, we are going to multiply that by a thousand since one meter is equivalent to a thousand millimeters. And it is going to give us negative 0 0.12 millimeters. Now, the negative uh, sign means that the total elongation will be a decrease in length. Therefore, the brass bar will be shortened or it will decrease in length by 0 0.12 millimeters. And therefore, the total decrease or the total elongation will be a decrease in length. So, a decrease in length of 0 0.12 millimeters. So that's how I go about it. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate for keeping on um, supporting us. If you are not yet a subscriber, please consider hitting the subscription button and we are going to appreciate. Let's meet in yet another lesson.